Hey heroes, Isaac Sefer here, and welcome back to the creative world, actually, um, rather than another Unearthed Lands. Um, I have been, like I was saying, working on that project with a uh, companion. Um, it's basically my job to do all the redstone, <laughs> which uh, I don't mind too much. It gives me more projects to do and, you know, the opportunity for more episodes like this. Um, anyway... Um, this was the prototype for what I was trying to figure out. I just want to put some backstory into it. Basically, uh, part of the map that I am assisting to create, and I will be creating my own map later, most likely using this. Uh, that would have been in the last world download as well. Um, I will explain that in due time. But one of the concepts is the timed games. Um, and now, as it currently stands, the only way to have, or the old way to have a timed game is something along the lines of really long repeater chains which aren't bad they're precise they get the job done they cause a little bit of lag just because of the constant light updates unless you know you got torches laying around everywhere uh, but you know they're, they they are not a terrible system very long but not a terrible system I, re I respect them greatly actually because I have used them in the auto brewer as we know uh, attached to use as pulse length extenders but I was th considering that when you're going to be doing that, so you say, you know, six units of time, then you need a block with a bit, and then your notification that time goes by, and then, yeah, even more. And it can be, th it's thin, it's, it's nice, but it's, again, a lot of lag and a lot of repeaters. So I was trying to think of what is a better way to do it. What could cause less per tick lag? Uh, even at the cost of just using a little bit more space. And considering the time variance, I think I've got something pretty good figured out. Now, I'm just going to hit this timer and you'll see it uses a lot of pistons getting it in action. So we have Etho Hopper Timers. We have Mono Stable Circuits. We have yeah, one tick pulses attached to repeaters. And we have redstone lines going every which way. So, I'm going to try to break it down to the basics. Currently, these are set to a one-minute timer. Uh, just for the sake of, I'm going to need to have about 14 of these in the map I'm making for a 15-minute total. And you can move these further apart. I'm just trying to keep it compact in the creative world. And this is, I'm thinking this is going to be the final design. Whoop, and there you go. You can saw it go again. So, basically, this is an auto-resetting timer style. Uh, what you have here is just the timer with 86 blocks in it for it to be a single minute. Now what happens is to initialize, initialize the clock you hit this button which will activate this monostable circuit which will send a single tick to the yeah, piston there. Now by doing that we move the redstone block from this position here which is always powering this hopper to back here. Now see this is the, what I was talking about by auto resetting. This is its neutral position where it has all 86 items in there and none in there. Once I set this off, this redstone block gets pulled back, this one no longer receives power and it starts feeding into that one, reversing this piston as well once it's done. Once all of the items have swapped over to this hopper, this bit switches over which I'll actually let you watch now. You also have whenever this pulls back it gives you your notification for time. So you get your notification of time once, so there's no chance of it at are going a second time. You're seeing that bits resetting over there as well. Yeah, we'll wait for the 86 items to go. Once they do, this will go off. It'll set off another monostable circuit. Again, sending a single pulse this way to pulse that one back, and a second one tick pulse back to this one in order to push it back to the front there and basically set it in the reset position. Now, then it'll be on its own. See, we'll watch it swap over here now. Sends its single pulse. That goes up there. That comes back, we see the other test bit in the bottom right there. I do have it very light, but you can see it. Where it'll send off the other uh, pulse saying that the next minute has passed. Now the other thing that you can add to this one, which is kind of difficult to do with the repeater one, because unless you're going to... You can do, you know, specific moments in time for your finishes, but the other bit that I needed this one to do was if somebody won before the timer ended, so before the 15 minute timer, if any of the win conditions are met, this needs to lock off and be able to auto reset for the next round. So you have the ability right here on this line, just before the notification saying, hey, next game is going to start, 
that you can have a block. Now what this will do, this will allow that when the pulse goes through, if say, you know, this was minute number 12 out of 15, going on to minute 13 and somebody won, we can announce that the winner happens with this line here, be it, you know, person A or person B. Yeah, and it will block off this line, preventing this angle pulse from going through here. So this clock will never actually be run, and this one will just simply go through its reset before the next game will be available. Now, so long as you don't have somebody win in minute one, which is generally impossible for the game that we've been working on, uh, you don't really have it. All you have to do is make sure that it is kept long enough that the repeater in question goes into its reset cycle, as we see it doing it here. But yeah, so that'll block it off when the win condition is met, the clock will reset, you'll just need about, and this is kind of the one downside, is at the end of the game, uh, if it was finished before the end of the 15 minutes, you do need kind of like a one minute delay or so before starting the circuit again, which is easy enough to add in, just have it that you could have a repeater going from, actually no, you can't really have a repeater going from that line, what am I talking about? Um, basically you just have it that you could extend this line a little bit, have a repeater come off of it, and inform the rest of the bits to cut off, say, here, where it will not allow for another start until the game is done, or even just have the reset lines tied to the start as well, so until it is, it, you can have its own timer that's just one of these for one or two minutes, so it'll lock off all of them, which is the intention anyway, you're not locking off just a specific one, if somebody wins you lock them all off just to ensure that, yeah, again, everything stops, so if someone were to meet the win condition it would be more like this, where, yeah they won, all of the lines get cut off, so it locks the clock in the minute that it's on. Anyway, um, I, I've probably screwed up explaining this at least a little bit, but the basics of it is, it is a sectionable clock, so you can have one of these as high as, I think, three and a half minutes or so. Um, additionally, you don't have to have the notification in every section, so you could have, like, you know, this minute being two and a half, this one being two and a half, and then at the end of every five minutes it notifies you. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basics of it. It's the clock I plan to be using for the upcoming game I am redstoning for, and I very much like it. It meets all of the requirements for a game that can technically end before the end of a time limit, say something like um, uh, maybe a base defense style thing, where Team 1 wins if it hits the end of the line, and Team 2 wins if they kill all of Team 1, and it locks it off. So, you know, it's just a matter of test four commands and whatnot that will be hooking this up to, but I wanted to show it off. Just because I do, I really enjoy it, and I'm just going to run it one more time. So, till next time, this is Isaac Zephyr. Uh, look forward to the upcoming map, and uh, I will see you all later, heroes.